I'm Jane Trejere, and this is Talking Art, and we are here at the Deerfield Arts Bank continuing our conversation with local artists. Today we have Linda Devine, and her work is, can I say it, Devine. Thank you. I'm sorry, that was really, <laughs> I could do better than that. In fact, by the end of this half hour, I'm sure we will have a lot of other wonderful words to add to your descriptions here. Um, <clears throat> I should say that we have the, uh, Linda is dear to me and, and wonderful because she also is the creator of all our posters for the different shows and uh, the current show, which is black and white and red all over, you see this is her poster and uh, I'll give you a glimpse of some of the earlier ones as well. But that's her graphic arts work. This is her pastels. Mostly pastels, yes? Uh, mostly that I brought with me, yes. So, well, you'll tell us about the ones that you didn't bring as well. I, yes. Uh, well, w w how did you choose pastels? Are you going to tell us about that? Yes. Okay. So where do you come from, Linda? I come from Philadelphia. And how did you get to here? Moved to uh, Boston in 1982 to study macrobiotics with Misho Kushi. Yes. And I, I liked know. it and I stayed. <laughs> You stayed in Boston. Well, I stayed in the Boston area until 2000, and then we moved to Western Massachusetts. What brought you here? Um, buying a house. Oh, so good, yeah. wonderful. So tell us about um, how you started. Were you always an artist? Did everybody know you were an artist? Did you know you were an artist? Being an only child, my parents always tried to foster anything I liked to do. I played music. And I painted and drawed from the time I was like seven years old. And mm -hmm. they always would buy me all kinds of art supplies and really, really back up what I wanted to do. They were really wonderful that way. Hmm. And did you go off and study art officially someplace? Philadelphia school system at that time, which was a long time ago, um, had free Saturday art classes and music classes. In a, for such a large uh, school system, it was really wonderful. So you could apply for that. And I started attending Saturday classes when I was in elementary school all the way through high school. Mm -hmm. And after that, I went on to a commercial art school, Hushin in Philadelphia, and I graduated from there. So that was Wh my What did you learn at Hushin? Mostly graphic design, but there were also fine art classes. It's a commercial art school, so it doesn't have the academics, only art history. Mm -hmm. Everything was an art class. It was printing, drawing, painting, and the commercial classes, which graphic design. So all studio classes, but all, also also history. Also art history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. so when you graduated from there, you got a job as? As uh, while I was still there, I was working for a chain of clothing boutiques in downtown Philadelphia, and I did display work for them. Uh -huh. I did their interior displays and their window displays, uh -huh. along with working in the store, but that was the fun part of it. So yes, that was my first use of my spatial, you know, learning. Uh -huh. yeah. And then I went on to, um, after graduating from Hushin, I worked for a company that actually made displays. They, they did oh. props and oh. actual display pieces, and I designed those, and I worked for them for a short time. Uh -huh. After that, I went on to work for a large department store in their display um, department, and we built and made displays and uh, did the windows and did the interior so, displays. So do big department stores have a workshop someplace where all Not of this Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. But that then was, they did? Then they did. We actually had table saws. We had all kinds of things. You know, we oh, did all kinds of things. We what had a, fun. It was fun. It was really this fun. This is still in Philadelphia? This is still in Philadelphia, yes. What was the store? Sears, believe Sears. it or not. Sears. Uh -huh. And nationally, I was in the second largest national store. So why do you suppose they don't have that anymore? Because of funding. And they thought it was, they just lost all their artistic appeal. Uh huh. Okay. So and then, and then what happened? I'm trying to think. What I, um, Did you stay in the arts? I've always drawn and I've always painted for myself and for but my children. Were you able to stay in the art world in terms of your your ability to earn a living? No, for a while. Well, I dropped out. 
because I had six children. Uh, well, that's a good excuse. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I was very busy doing things for them. I, w I would always be the craftsperson for of course. everything. In yes. school, I was the mother of choice to do costumes and things yes. like that. So I spent um, pretty much the 80s having children and doing that kind of, you know, mm -hmm. doing my crafts and painting for myself. Mm -hmm. But no, I didn't. I didn't show anywhere at that time. Mm -hmm. So when did you start picking it up again? I started um, the Monet piece that I have here was the beginning of a, a renaissance for me. Um, my husband and I, for our 18th wedding anniversary, went to Monet's house and garden. In Giverny? Yeah. Uh, we had been in Paris, and I said, we have to go here. And it was so much fun because <clears throat> the day we went, it rained all the way there, and I thought, I'm never going to come back again, but it's okay. I'm going to walk in the gardens in the rain. We got out of the van, and the sun came out. Mm -hmm. We did the whole gardens. We took photographs. It was wonderful. We got back in the van, and it started pouring. And uh -huh. I said, that, this Very was good meant timing. to be. Yes. This was meant to be. So you, you, you did this from your photographs? From my photographs, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was my first piece that I tried, and I wanted to try... The, what medium is this? This is pastel. So you had been trained in pastels? No, I taught myself. So this was not part of your training? No. Why did you choose pastels? It's not an easy one to start with. I love to paint in oils. Oh. And having children, it was too toxic. Uh huh. So I wanted to find something that I didn't have to worry about drying, I didn't have to worry about spilling, that was more immediate. Uh huh. And I actually liked the fact that I didn't have to mix the colors. It was, it was a challenge for me not to mix the colors but still get vibrance out of it. So I liked that. And I don't use soft pastels. I only use hard pastels. Oh. I don't blend at all. I use a sanded paper. Yes. And then I do um, a watercolor pencil drawing from the photograph that I have. And then I... Um, a watercolor do, pencil? Watercolor pencil, so it goes away, because I do washes first. So I do opposite color washes, contrasting colors. So anything that's green is red underneath. Anything that's red is green underneath. So This that, is how you paint this that's before you come to the pastels? Yes. So on, on, a, on a pastel board or Sanded paper... Sanded paper, yeah. You use watercolors? Yes. And you paint the opposite color that you want. Yes. That's a tremendous amount of planning. How does your brain do that? I, I do it very loosely underneath, but it's also because I don't want to completely cover with pastel, and I want that color, the opposite color, to come out and pop. So behind this green is red. Is red. Yes. And behind this red is green. Yes. And, and behind it, the purple is yellow? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And, and behind the white is what? Um, I think it's more a blue or a purple color. I don't remember. This one's long ago, so I don't remember. You can see it more in other pieces where it pops, and some of those especially, some of our other pieces that I have with me, where the color pops because it's open. Oh. Is that the blue I see back there? Yeah. I see. So, so behind this red flower is a little bit of blue that you've allowed to come out. Yeah. Very interesting. But I feel that um, I learned that technique from a painting teacher that I had when I went to Hushin. He was from Korea, and he would also tell, always tell us to use opposite colors underneath the painting and let it show to make the color pop. Uh -huh. so. Well, so, okay, so this was your first one. Yes. And, and then you went on, you clearly love flowers. You went on to do, are these representational of most of your work? There's one here of a cat. That's a little different. Well, I also do um, portraits. Not as many as the flower pieces, but I do Also portraits. in pastels? Yeah, also in pastels. And I use op opposite colors underneath also. Oh. That. And um, there's one of a cat that I did for um, a friend of mine. And um, that was their cat, Bunky. Uh-huh. 
But this one here <coughs> seems, this one that, that is very full, lots of flowers, lots of green and red, uh, a little confusing. You did that also in the same way with the opposite colors? Yes, you can see underneath the green. Are you working from flowers? Uh, from, uh, for, sorry, for, with photographs? With photographs. I see, so you can keep referring back, yes? This is um, the third of uh, three pieces. The first one is one flower, then the second one has a close-up of flowers, and then this is more loosely interpreted a lot of flowers. So we've together. got number two and three here. We have two and three here, yes. So these flowers are in that pile yes. someplace. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. But my goal is, my goal when I do this also, is to keep it fresh and make it look like it's moving and it, alive. It, it looks like the wind is blowing right through it. And that's, that's my goal. I want to make it look like it's, it's alive. So you found these flowers and took a photograph. I have, uh, I'm, I have a few friends that have really nice gardens, and I can't grow anything. I see. Well, that's okay. You can draw them, and they can't probably. So I, <clears throat> yes, that's a fair exchange. So you photograph images that uh, really appeal to you, and then in this case, you, you did uh, details. Of the same, of something in the same photograph, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and then this was not from the photograph. This was more a freeform this response. This was the photograph. The photograph was actually um, of a larger amount, and uh -huh. I, I, the, the one is the one flower. Yes, which is that one flower, right? The yeah. bigger flower, and then I went widened out. And, and this is the full picture. That's yes. the full picture. Uh huh. And um, it's daunting. It's daunting. I look at this and I'm thinking, I wouldn't know where to begin. And you, and you pull it all together and it's all composed. Um, so, um, are these anemones here? Yes. Um, is this part of a series also? No, that's a standalone. It's by itself. And these are anemones, yes? Yes. Yes. And and it's all the same technique. But you also use something other than pastels, correct? Is this work pastels? No, I, I do um, acrylics also. I've gotten back into doing acrylics. I did How did you choose acrylics? Your children are all grown now, I would assume. Oil paints are, are safer now, you, but you chose acrylics, not oil. Well, I, I went back to school in 2005 oh. at Holyoke Community College. I wanted to learn how to do uh, Photoshop and all kinds of graphic things that yes. way. Because when I went to school, it was all done by hand. And right. I, my children were learning all these things. I'm thinking, I need to learn how to do this. Things. That's uh -huh. It's fun. So when I went back, I not only took graphic classes, I took painting classes uh -huh. also. Uh -huh. And it was acrylic paints. And I struggled with it because I kept getting this feeling that it was plasticky. I wasn't getting the, the translucence that I uh -huh. wanted. But I came, one of my professors uh, showed me this technique where you do layers and you actually have your very thin, like watercolor acrylics, and then you take a medium and you put the medium over it, then you sand it, and that will, that will keep the translucency so it won't become opaque. So I can do it in layers. Uh -huh. So I started doing more acrylics now because I really enjoy that. This does not look. Um Bents at all. It looks very transparent. That's how I wanted it to look. I Do like you give names to your paintings? Yes. So what is this red one here? Well, it's actually pink. It pink. looks red, but it's called Pink Up. Pink Up. Yep. Pink Up. And what, do you know what flower that is? Oh, I'm trying to think what it is. No. No. It's okay. So Pink Up and, um, and the one uh, next to it, the, the, the one that's there are two things there that I'm, I, I would love to understand better. One of them is these nine pieces, and then there's... Can you talk to me about those nine pieces? Are those in acrylics? Um, the, origin, the, one, the one by itself is an acrylic painting. This started with, I wanted to represent winter in bright colors, snow. So I took a photograph, and one of the nine pieces, the very bottom, right-hand side is actually a photograph yeah. that I took. 
um, and this, the larger piece by itself is the painting I did from the photograph using pinks and oranges and reds, yellows actually, um, to represent snow. I wanted it to be look like snow but not be blue, like everyone usually is blues and purples, cold colors. I wanted to try to represent it with warmer colors. Yes. Um, then I took that piece and I warped it into different ways of through Photoshop. Through Photoshop. So. And I made it into different, the same piece, but different ways different, of looking at right. it. And I'm working on the piece now that it's almost finished, that I printed it on different kinds of papers with different colors, so that it's actually, it looks like a quilt, but it's, they're separately um, framed, but it all fits together as nine pieces of the same thing. So it's, it's my snow piece. It's very, very lovely. Very lovely. <clears throat> and so the, the, this is acrylic and the rest is all Photoshop. It all, it's all Photoshop, but it's on papers. I use regular um, watercolor paper. I print on fabric. I print on, I like to experiment with my poor printer goes through. <laughs> how do you print on, how do you get the fabric through your printer? If you put paper behind it in a special binding, you can do that. And sometimes you can just run the fabric if it's, if it's stiff. Stiff enough, yes. But if it's not stiff, would you, do you sort of like glue it down? You have to um, put a backing on it. You know, um, there's a very Wax thin, paper? Yeah, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can actually print tin foil even. You print on tin foil? You can if you have the right mediums. Um, on t Golden makes a medium that you can print on tin foil. You can put it right through your printer. You mean you need special inks in your printer? You need a special medium to, to put on it. So oh, you it paint grabs, the surface you first. You paint the surface first, and then you put it through your, you, you pull it, stretch it, make sure it's flat, and then you can put it right through your my goodness. Printer. What wonderful ideas. Do you recommend it? Should um, we all try it? If you don't care if you ruin your printer. The printers are so inexpensive nowadays. Yeah, if you don't care. It's, right. it's fun. There's a lot of things you can, people have done some really interesting things with, you know, printers. So now let's get away from the two-dimensional and let's talk about three-dimensional because you're also a jewelry designer. Yes. Would you like to show us here? Sure. This is a uh, uh, a journal, a professional journal of, of, of jewelry? This is Belle Armoire Jewelry and it's um, spring 2015. Belle Armoire is a company? Yes. Well, it's Stampington. They do a lot of crafts magazines and uh, this is their jewelry magazine. So this is uh, a pin that I made. Can you tell us what it's made of? It's made of, um, I had a painting that I loved the colors but didn't want to finish it. Didn't want to gesso over it, so I cut it up and I made jewelry out of it. So this is pieces of canvas? Pieces of canvas and also leather. Where's the leather? The leather is here and here. Oh, some of it is leather and some of it is canvas. Leather and canvas. And what is that round thing it's at the top? It's just a button, a wooden button. A wooden button. Mm -hmm. And so, uh-huh, and what, what size is that to wear? Is that life it's, size? It's, it's a little larger than life it's size. It's larger than life size. It's about three inches by three inches. Uh-huh. So. And there's another one there? Yeah, I have another piece in here also. This is a bracelet. And this is another piece of canvas, I, which I pleated. And then um, I took the leather cut it out. It reminded me of an identification bracelet when I was younger. They used what to are open. the sticks that are through it? Oh, that's their photograph thing. That's not... That's you don't wear the sticks. No, you don't wear the sticks. I see. <laughs> oh, that's, that's confusing. Yeah, okay. that's how they... they I see. It. And uh -huh. then the leather um, is a bracelet. I like to make organic looking leather pieces. I'm not sure how you and I met. I can't remember exactly. But the first thing I saw of yours was this chair here. Now we're looking at a photograph of it because somebody actually bought it. Yes. And uh, you, you submitted this to the exhibit I had which was called um, uh, Chair Dreams dot 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 interpreted. And you made out of wire a chair and you 
use fabric that had things to do with Paris on it because I know you love Paris. Mm -hmm. Have you been? Yes. Do you go often? No. Oh. And uh, it's, it stands on its own like that. And the top of the chair opens up and is the ins you get inside the bag that way. The, the seat of the chair mm -hmm. flops up. It's um, a traditional cafe style chair. The, <clears throat> the designer of that chair, the original one in the 19 teens, was a man named, two brothers named Thonet, T-H-O-N-E-T. And there it is, that's the classic bistro chair and um, it's about 10 inches tall you think was about that I think it was about 15 15 inches yeah. high, and it has a strap that you put around your mm -hmm. um, shoulder and uh, it was a very popular piece in the show mm -hmm. what is the one uh, again this is a photograph because we don't own the piece or you don't own it anymore mm -hmm. what is that this is a bra and it's called chicks rule Chicks rule? Rule. Okay. And it's got little... Chicks. Chicks all over it and yes. feathers inside and photographs of the chicks. Why the are you bra. doing bras? This was for um, breast cancer to raise money. And it was an organization that did calendars and a um, fundraiser called Show Us Your Bra. That, it's in Northampton. It's, it's in Northampton. Yeah. And it was... Uh, it was a call to artists or anyone who wanted to. I think it's every year. I, they haven't done it in a few years. Oh, they haven't? Okay. No. That you would um, bring in your bra, whimsical, wonder, whatever, and they would choose 12 of them to be in a calendar, and then the calendar would be sold. Uh. So this particular bra was a lot of fun to make, and I made it in honor of a friend of mine. Uh huh. And it was in a calendar one year, and then they did the best of and they voted on which should be on the cover, and that one was on the cover. Oh, because everyone liked well, Chicks congratulations. Rule. So that was an honor. Was it actually wearable? Yes, you could wear it. I made it so that you could change the straps, you, you know, hooked in the back, everything. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I don't know who has it. Somebody has it. They bought it. <laughs> so. Oh, that's wonderful. So uh, over here we have something else. Would you show I us that? I also make handbags out of my artwork. This is... Uh, a handbag that I made. I like to make things look organic. And the right in here, as you can see, this is like leather material that I use that I put through my computer, which is from a lithography that I did. And so flowers again. I love flowers. And uh, pieces. This is an old belt. I like to Oh, it really is an old belt. I like to repurpose things, you know, and, and use them. This is an old belt here, part of an old belt. And I just like to reuse things and make handbags. Can we see the back too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So jewelry and handbags and painting and lots of fun things. What are you working on now? I'm working on the, um, the snow piece. I'm also working on small paintings. A friend of mine gave me canvases that were already colored. And I wanted to see how the paint worked on the colored canvases, like they're red and they're blue and they're, oh. they're already, which I thought, hmm. But it's been interesting. I've been working on palette knife paintings, really small ones, like eight by eight. And I'm working on a piece about adoption also, because I'm adopted. And uh, it's been an ongoing thing for a couple of years to come to an image that is how I feel about adoption, but I've finally come to it and I'm starting the piece now. Oh, we don't, okay, well, you're starting the piece. Yeah, it's Maybe not another time we'll see it. You also come up, well, I, I participate a bit, but you come up with our, our past posters. Mm -hmm. You saw at the beginning, you saw the current one, but here was um, paper art. Mm -hmm. You produced that and you produced the um, weaving up and down. And also the um, s small gifts for... Oh, yes. I didn't bring that one out. That was, um, yeah. right, for... Uh, so all of our posters. So it was, it's also a pleasure working with you because we, we talk together about, you know, what's the image? Mm -hmm. You throw out ideas. I throw out ideas. Mm -hmm. I send you some things. You send me some things. And then off you go, and you create something. I think there must be a real sense of satisfaction. 
Yes, I like, um, first of all, I like being able to do it for you hmm. and with Thank you. Thank you. I really do. And uh, I like to have a challenge. When the chair piece we talked about, when I first met you, um, the first thing you said is, oh, my next, my next show is going to be about chairs. And my mind just started going, what can I do with chairs? Yes. So I love to have a challenge. If someone gives me a challenge, I just like to run with it. And really, are you, are you, did you respond to this challenge of black and white and red all over? Yes, I have some pieces. And uh, the next one will be landscapes. I was thinking maybe my snow pieces. I think so too. Yeah. I'd love to see that. Well, thank you very much, thank Linda you. Devine. This has been a real pleasure. Um, I hope it's been a pleasure for you too. And uh, if there's some questions I'm not asking, let us know. There's an web, email at the bottom there. And, uh, and if there are people that you'd like to recommend that I interview, I'm interested in that as well. And I'm Jane Trigere. This is Talking Art. We're here at the Deerfield Arts Bank, and we'll see you next week.